In my opinion, one clear revelation of biblical prophecy is contained in Matthew 24, 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So when will the end come? When this gospel of the kingdom has been preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. Whose job is that? Ours. I'm glad you said that. Now, if we're not working on that, if we're not obeying that revelation, why God, should God tell us any more? But you begin to work on that revelation. You begin to devote yourself in whatever way is appropriate to getting the gospel of the kingdom out to all nations. You'll be surprised what God will show you next. But if you haven't acted on that, why should he show you any more? He won't. Now, we're going to come back to a picture of the close of this age. I'm going to make certain general statements about what the kind of things that will be going on as this age comes to a close. I believe we're very near the close of the age. That's my personal opinion. Now, I want to take certain fe features of the close of the age. I'll give you three significant scriptures. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 60. What I want to say is, as the age comes to a close, righteousness and wickedness will both be on the increase. Righteousness will flourish, and so will wickedness. Light will shine, and there will be great darkness. We've got to get adjusted to this antith antithesis between these two things of light and darkness, righteousness and wickedness. Now in Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2 and 3, the Lord is speaking to his people. And he says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. That's a promise for God's people at the close of the age. The glory of God will shine upon us. And in the midst of the dense, dense darkness that is surrounding us on all sides, that is covering all nations, those who have a heart for truth will come out of the darkness to the people of God to seek the light. But don't expect the darkness to end. It will continue and it will grow deeper. But the light will get brighter. And there's one wonderful fact about light and darkness which goes right back to the creation. Wherever light meets darkness, who wins? Light. That's right. Just bear that in mind. We win <laughs> if we're the light. Then the parable of the wheat and the tares. I won't go into that reading from it because time is running out, but the parable is about a farmer who sowed good seed in his field, and then in the night an enemy came and sowed tares, wheat, or uh, weeds, that apparently look like wheat, but they, there's just one thing, they don't have any fruit. They don't produce anything you, that's worth having. And the, the, the workers in the field said, well, shall we go and pull up the tares? And the farmer said, no, because when you try to pull up the tares, you may pull up some of the wheat. Let them both grow together to harvest. And then in t interpreting the scripture, Jesus says the harvest is the end of the age. He says at the end of the age, the angels will come forth and sever the wicked from among the righteous. The wicked will be bound up in bundles and cast into the fire. The righteous will shine as suns in the kingdom of their father. But bear in mind that right up to the close of the age, the wheat and the tares will be growing up side by side. And that's not speaking about the, the pagan world. This is speaking about professing Christendom, because that's what it's talking about. In that situation, both wheat and tares will grow side by side. And if you want to be sure you're wheat and not tares, check on the fruit that you're producing, because that's the difference. The church is not going to be fully purified until the end of the age. And then we're not going to do it. I'm glad I don't have to do it. The angels are going to do that. And then in Revelation 22, right near the end of the scripture, a word from Jesus himself. Revelation 22, verses 10, 11, and 12. He, the angel that brought the revelation, said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unrighteous, let him be unrighteous still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. 
He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. That's a remarkable statement since it comes from God. God is saying, in effect, if you want to be unrighteous, go on. You don't have long, live it up. If you want to be filthy, be still more filthy. But if you're righteous, be still more righteous. If you're holy, be still more holy, because this is the parting of the ways. And then Jesus says in the next breath, Behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to give it to everyone according to his work. So this is immediately before the return of the Lord. The wicked and the righteous side by side. The wicked getting more wicked, the righteous getting more righteous. And let me say, in the spiritual life, there is no standing still. You cannot remain static. You have to be going either forward or backward. The book of Proverbs says, the pathway of the righteous is like the shining light which shines more and more onto the perfect day. Righteousness is not a standstill. It's a pathway. It's something you move in. And if you're moving in that way, the light is getting brighter every day. If you're living today by yesterday's light, you're beginning to be a backslider. You're not in the pathway of righteousness. All right, so those are two things. Then in the midst of all this, Jesus offers us some beautiful words of comfort. In Luke 21, verses 25 through 28. Luke 21, 25 through 28. Speaking about the close of the age, there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and the stars, on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. The whole globe is going to be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That's the coming of Jesus. Now this is what he says. Now he's speaking to his disciples. When these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. So how do you react to all the turmoil and the conflict? Do you get depressed and discouraged? Or do you say, praise God, our redemption is very near? 